Hello and welcome to Jeremy's Retro Bar. I'm Jeremy and this is my Retro Bar and this week we're going to be taking a look at this, my 386 reverse sleeper build from my octet of eight vintage computers that are all reverse sleeper builds. Uh, but of course first we're going to need to make ourselves a drink. So this week we're going to be making ourselves a classic Martinez cocktail and we're going to start by putting ice in our mixing glass. We're going to use two ounces of gin, three quarters of an ounce of sweet vermouth, one quarter ounce maraschino liqueur, and one dash of aromatic bitters. Then we're going to stir that. We're going to strain that into a cocktail glass, or in this case, a martini glass. And then we're going to garnish with a lemon twist. And there we have a Martinez. Cheers. That's very good. I really like this cocktail. That's very good. All right, let's take a look at this 386. So this is my 386 reverse sleeper build. This is the one that kind of started off the idea for doing all eight of the systems. And it's the oldest and probably the one I use the most because it encompasses the era of PC gaming that I played the most, which is adventure games from Sierra and Lucas uh, in the early 90s. Um, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just open it up, take a look at all the components that I have inside of it, and then we're gonna take it for a test run. So uh, starting off, this is an NZXT 510E uh, case. Um, I actually like this one a little less because it has the tinted side panels. I've emailed them and contacted them several times with no reply asking if I could just get a, a clear side panel because I want to see the vintage components inside of it. That's kind of the purpose of these machines is that we can really take a look and see the components and not be distracted by uh, the exterior things that would have been common in the day. Anyway, go ahead and pop our tempered glass off. So this USB cable that I have here is actually running to my SCSI to SD, which is what I'm using for a hard drive in this machine. Um, and I just have it popping out the back because anytime I need to load things onto it, I can just pop this USB into a, a modern computer and copy files onto it, which is a really, really convenient thing to have in one of these machines. I'm just gonna start top to bottom and go through all the cards and what they are and lay them out and then go ahead and put them back in. So our first card here is a VGA card. This is an ultimate VGA true color, one megabyte VGA card or super VGA card really. It has a Sing Labs ET4000AX graphics chip in it and uh, just a regular VGA output. Um, of course the 16-bit ISA and uh, it's actually a newer card. It was actually uh, from 1998, um, but the Sing Labs graphics chip is so compatible with all the DOS games of the era that it's a really good chip for this era of machines. Next up is sound. So my sound card is a Sound Blaster CT1600, which is a Sound Blaster Pro 2, which uh, is a very good card, again, for this era. So because the Sound Blaster doesn't have intelligent mode MIDI support, I have this low-tech MIF IPC-B adapter, which is a, basically a recreation of the original Roland uh, MIF IPC card, uh, which are next to impossible to find. So uh, this one is made by Texelec, and it features the same DB25 connector that allows it to connect to my MPU-401 which then goes into my MT32. So that is the card that sits in here. And uh, again, it's a modern card to replace that, uh, the one that's next to impossible to find. Okay, next up is my floppy controller. So, 
So this is just a Monotech Deluxe Floppy Bootable ISA HD Floppy and Serial Controller card. So again, this is another modern card. This one's made by Monotech and it has a high density floppy connector. So uh, that goes into a GoTech drive that I have in here. And it also features a serial port. So it's a nice kind of two in one for the 386 era where um, I didn't need as many cards. I didn't need uh, like a AST six pack pro or anything. It just gives me kind of a two in one saves a slot, gives me a floppy controller and a serial port, which is really nice. So the last one is an Adaptic AVA 1505-1515 SCSI controller card. And uh, I use that because I use a SCSI to SD in this uh, computer. Um, I've noticed with earlier BIOS um, systems, sometimes it's a little bit easier to do a SCSI controller uh, to get it to boot off of, uh, off of some of these uh, uh, compact flash cards. Uh, it just made it a lot easier and I got less errors uh, when writing to it and things like that. So I just really like it. I think it's really great. It gives me a lot of stability uh, in this machine for its age. This is an FIC 4386VC-HD ISA motherboard with a AMD AM386DX running at 40 megahertz. It has one Mathco DX advanced math coprocessor from ULSI Systems. It has 32 megabytes of RAM. Uh, it supports up to 128, um, but I feel it's overkill for the machine. So one of the unique things about this motherboard is the motherboard is kind of from that early 90s era where you may have a 386 or a 486. So it has this 386 processor built into it. Um, but where the math processor goes, math coprocessor goes, you could put a 486 processor in that slot. And when you do that, it actually supports this, which is an Opti local bus, which is a, which is a pretty proprietary uh, card slot of the era. Um, but that's the extra speed for that is only available if I have it as a 486. And because I'm using this as a 386, that's just gonna act as a regular ISA slot. But uh, still a pretty cool feature that it has that gives me a little bit higher bandwidth if I wanted to for my graphics card. Uh, if I had a compatible graphics card, which are the Opti local bus cards are kind of hard to find. Um, but yeah, so anyway, uh, that is what I have in this machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and put everything back together. All right, with all of that explored, let's go ahead and get it plugged into the monitor and all its peripherals and take a test drive. So this is running DOS version 5, MS-DOS version 5, um, because uh, I actually probably would have had DOS 4 during this time, but we all know how buggy and bad that was, so I went ahead and put DOS 5 onto this machine. Uh, of course, this is running um, one of, whoops, One of my favorite uh, little interfaces of the time before I had Windows, this was my main file manager, was just using MS-DOS shell, uh, and I still like it. Um, I have it configured for two hard drives uh, on the SCSI to SD. So um, the C drive is, I believe it's 500 megabytes because that's the max that um, it can see as a boot drive. But uh, the D drive is actually set up to be one gigabyte, which uh, is an insane amount uh, of space for uh, a computer of this era. Uh, and so, yeah, and it's literally just my Sierra games <laughs> that are in, uh, in the uh, D drive, um, which, you know, got a decent amount here. Um, so yeah. Um, and I also have on here, oops, um, a 
Windows 3.0, which of course is the one that has no uh, multimedia features, no sound or anything, but uh, it does have all the kind of office-y things. So um, I thought the computer was too powerful to throw Windows 386 on it. Um, that's why my 286 has uh, Windows 286 on it, uh, which, you know, barely runs anything. And Windows 3 was really the first real version that ran anything. So that's why I've got that here. Uh, obviously, I haven't really done a lot with it. Um, we've just got Solitaire and Reversi, uh, the basic versions of some things. Looks like I've got King's Quest V uh, installed from there. Uh, and then, yeah, just paintbrush and uh, kind of all the rest, regular basic things here. So. Not too much in the area of Windows, but uh, it is there if I want to run it. But like I said, mainly it's a DOS 5 machine, um, which again, stays true to the era. And that's why I decided to run that version of the operating system. So if we run over to, um, to the Phil's Computer Lab benchmarks, uh, I think it's just bench, right? Oh, nope. Um, DOS Bench, that's right. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and run a couple of these benchmarks just to show you what, uh, what kind of performance we get out of this guy. And it looks like we've got a Superscape, oop, <laughs> looks like we have a Superscape benchmark of eight. <laughs> Chris's bench score of 6.7. That is four frames per second. That is not a lot for, again, 3D performance, but not something you really did in 1992, which is the kind of the newest era of games that I have on this guy. First Doom test. Again, this is very slow for this machine, um, but I think it might just run. Seems to be running fine in the small window. So it's showing. We've got uh, IBM AT are compatible. AMI BIOS says it's December 12th, 1991. I guess I need to set the clock. Um, <laughs> It does have the 40 megahertz processor. It shows my math coprocessor, uh, Visa compatible, VGA, no secondary mouse, secondary display, serial mouse. Um, shows my 523 megabyte C drive and my one gigabyte D drive. Got a floppy drive. Shows my RAM at 32 meg. Shows that I have ISA bus, one serial port, zero parallel ports, 101 key keyboard, and DOS 5.0. This computer performs like a 37 megahertz AT with a 95 megahertz. 286 math coprocessor. This is a 1993 benchmark. You think it would uh, know a little bit better what we're doing here? Okay. Uh, now let's do top bench. So it looks like my top bench score is 53. Whatever that means. We'll do speed sys and then we'll get out of here. And there we are. We show up exactly where we should. Right at the uh, beginning of that. All right, and that's gonna do memory tests. So it's showing that we have a pretty decent speed 
hard drive, even though it's a SD card and a SCSI to SD adapter. Um, it's performing faster than a lot of the Pentium era hard drives would have been, uh, which is great. Um, so cool. So since I have an MT32 connected, because again, the games of this era made the most use of it, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the first game to use the MT32, which is King's Quest IV. Police Quest 3, which will have both the Roland and the Sound Blaster. A nice mix of recorded sound and rolling sound here. Maybe not the most effective, but that is what's happening. So anyway, that's really it for a look at my Octet Reverse Sleeper 386. Uh, it is really one of my favorite machines. Uh, I never owned a 386 of my own. I had a 286 and then a 486, um, but this uh, represents kind of the era of gaming in which uh, I was on a 286 uh, and all my friends had 386s. And so uh, it's just, all those games run better, faster, smoother on the 386. So it's just nice 
uh, to have it. I know it's not gonna <laughs> blow anybody away as far as 3D performance, uh, and that's why, you know, Doom is gonna run pretty not great on a 386, but all the adventure games, all of the other, uh, all the 80s, DOS games are gonna run great on it. Uh, and of course the early 90s stuff, which is the stuff that I really enjoy. So um, yeah, they don't get enough credit 386s I feel. And, uh, and I think they're really excellent machines. And uh, yeah, I just really like this guy. I really like um, the setup. I like that it has the Sound Blaster and the Roland in it. Uh, I love the speakers. Uh, everything about it. I think it's a great machine. Uh, and of course, eventually I'm gonna probably do a, a restoration on one of the compact 386s that I have, and that will have a CRT, um, and that'll, you know, kind of all be era accurate. Whereas this has as many new parts as I can to reduce maintenance, because it is out here on the floor that I expect people to be using, and uh, the less uh, that I have to replace, the better, so. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you next time.